there are now. There was no Goranaga or any of these things, you know. Uh, anyway, Prabhupada was walking around, we, and we had the, that along the wall where these shops are today, those were just little rooms and devotees were accommodated in there. We were staying there and there was a, outside there was one uh, round house, there was one toilet area with showers and toilets and it was near, and people staying in those rooms would then use these toilets over there. So Prabhupada came there and then he saw that one of the, he, he would look inside and he saw it's not dirty, not clean. The toilet wasn't clean, you know, somebody maybe used the toilet, hadn't flushed it. And Prabhupada got very upset. And the devotees were saying, but Prabhupada, we didn't do this. <laughs> but Prabhupada said, no, you are, if you are Brahman, you have to clean it. And Prabhupada, because Prabhupada, when he was a young man, he was a chemist, you know, he worked for the chemical laboratory, in a chemical laboratory. So he knew science. I mean, Prabhupada knew everything. He had a very good education. And he knew Shakespeare much better than I could ever know it. Somehow, <laughs> he knew history, everything about history, you know, all the, the dates and things. He learned everything, as well as, of course, Sanskrit, English, Bengali, Hindi, everything. And so Prabhupada quoted a chemical formula. You know that formula? Yeah. You're right. They say, He said the same way, a brahmana, a brahmana contacts a dirty place, you have to clean it. He said, you put a base and an acid together, there's a reaction. He said the same way, if a brahmana contacts a dirty place, they can't just leave it dirty. They have to clean it. This was Prabhupada's exactly. <laughs> Chastised in the body. <clears throat> You can't say, I didn't do it. That is not acceptable. <laughs> you have to clean it. Well, of course, this is, and this principle is there everywhere. When we go out for preaching, there's a lot of dirty, dirty hearts. We've got to try to clean the hearts of the people we preach with. So we give them Krishna consciousness. So this is an important principle. <laughs> so humility, pridelessness, they, they, they just think, they, they, hard, I, I've never been able to distinguish really between the two, it seems to be the same thing. But you could say maybe it's for emphasis, and they come first, the very first items of knowledge. This humility, pridelessness, very first thing. So, certainly seems to be very important for us. I should think. And, of course, Lord Chaitanya also includes it in the Shikshastikam prayers. And then Krishna Das Kaviraj also emphasizes it in Chaitanya Charitamrita. That put this verse on a thread, wear it round your neck for constant remembrance. So very important for us. Developing that humility. Humility and pridelessness, absence of false ego, again, is understanding that I am not the doer. <coughs> because the tendency is to think, I'm the doer, you know, I did it, I'm great, I'm this, you know. I scored the goal. I swung the bat, I hit the ball, you know, you know, like this. I did it. I won the election. I got the votes. You know, people all have this ego. They're thinking, I'm the doer. 
So Krishna consciousness, we understand, we are simply the instrument, become the instrument in the service of Krishna. A devotee, if anything goes well, the devotee gives the credit to Krishna, gives the credit to Guru and Krishna. And if it goes bad, the devotee takes the blame. Right? The one devotee, Prabhupada's god brother, he used to cook for the devotees in Vrindavan. Anand Babu, his name was. He was an elderly man, a brahmachari, and he would, he would cook. And the devotees would say, oh, Anand Prabhu, your cooking is so good. And he would say, if it tastes good, thank Krishna. But if it's not good, then blame me. <laughs> but we say, if it tastes good, I did it. <laughs> and if it's no good, Krishna's mercy. <laughs> <laughs> Krishna's mercy. 